please come back and finish your story? Alice called after it. And all the others all joined in chorus. Yes, yes, come on, please do. But the mouse only shook its head impatiently and walked a little quicker. Oh, what a pity it wouldn't stay, sighed the Lowry, as soon as it was quite out of sight. And an old crab took the opportunity of saying to her daughter, Ah, for sure, my dear, let this be a lesson to you, never to lose your temper. Hold your tongue, ma, said the young crab, a little snappishly. You're enough to try the patience of an oyster. I wish I had our diner here, I know I do, said Alice aloud, addressing nobody in particular. She'd soon fetch it back. <clears throat> and uh, who is Dinah, if I might venture to ask the question, said the Lowry. Alice replied eagerly, for she was already, always ready to talk about her pet. Oh, <laughs> Dinah's our cat, and she's such a capital one for catching mice, you can't think. And oh, I wish you could see her after the birds. Why, she'll eat a little bird as soon as look at it. The speech caused a remarkable sensation among the party. Some of the birds hurried off at once. One old magpie began wrapping itself up very carefully, remarking, I, I, I really must be getting home. <laughs> the night air doesn't suit my throat. And a canary called out in a trembling voice to its children. Oh, come, come, come away, my dears. It's high time you're all in bed. On various pre pretexts, they all moved off, and Alice was soon left alone. Oh, I wish I hadn't mentioned Dinah, she said to herself in a melancholy tone. Nobody seems to like her down here, and I'm sure she's the best cat in the world. Oh, my dear Dinah, I wonder if I shall ever see you any more. And here poor Alice began to cry again for she felt very lonely and low-spirited. In a little while, however, she again heard a little pattering of footsteps in the distance, and she looked up eagerly, half hoping that the mouse had changed his mind and was coming back to finish his story.